So you guys have asked me for a long period of time exactly how I make my videos look like this. So let's talk about that. We are going to cover the equipment I use, the process I go through step by step. And lastly I'm going to give you some friendly tips that I would have liked to have when I got started making videos. So without further ado, let's get going. The equipment I use are the following. I use a Rode NT USB microphone to record my audio through a program called Audacity which I also use for audio editing. I have a Wacom tablet that I really like and that I use to draw on an empty canvas in Photoshop. I just open up a new blank page and start drawing. And I use Camtasia as my video recording and editing software. I have used all these products and you will be fine whichever you pick in each category. But one thing that you should know when you're trying to decide on a video editing software is that you can do so much more in Premiere Pro than you can for example in Camtasia. But that program will also have a longer learning curve for you to master it. So if you only need the basic editing functions, then I recommend Camtasia. But if you have more advanced needs, then you're going to need Premiere Pro. The process I go through every time I create a new video can be divided into six steps. The first step is about doing your research and really reading up about the subject you want to talk about. Here I try to find what has already been done about the subject so that I might be able to bring something new to the discussion or maybe bring the same information but explain it in a different way. And you should always try to consume the information from different kinds of sources so that you can make your own opinion about the information and how it should be presented. For example, when I tried to find the definition of a conformal mapping, I found multiple different ways that authors have written out the definition. Here you can see three of them. And as you can see, different sources states the definition in different ways. And some of them are kind of the same, but are just using different words here and there, while others seem to be a completely new take on this definition. And here it's up to you to do your research and first of all find out which one is the right one. And the second part is which way should I present the definition so that it makes most sense in your context for your viewers. The next thing I do is that I create an overview for the lesson. Here I take all the information I gathered and I write down the main points I want to cover in the lesson. And this is usually enough information for me to start recording. But sometimes I also make a manuscript. If I feel like the information needs to be presented in a really specific way to get the point across. The next step is that I record my video footage. And I do that by opening up a new page in Photoshop, filling the background with black color. And then I just make sure that I'm capturing the right drawing area before I press record in Camtasia. And then the only thing that is left is to start drawing. And this part can take some time. But it all depends on how good you are with the tablet and what kind of quality you want. When all the video footage has been captured, I continue by going to Camtasia and start the editing process. And the first thing I do is to remove all the errors I made while writing. So I just go through the whole video, letter by letter, and remove all the errors so that it seems like everything was written the right way from the start. And by doing this we go from 12 hours of footage to only 2 hours. But that is still quite long, and it's simply because I write extremely slow. Here you can see me writing in real time. And since the viewer isn't here to see me write for an endless amount of time, they are here to understand the subject. I speed everything up by around 8 times the normal speed. And by doing that we end up with around 12 minutes of usable video footage. The next step in the process is that I use Audacity to record the audio that matches the video footage. And I really recommend you guys to get or buy a dedicated microphone. Because if you're using a microphone that might come with your laptop for example, then your audio is probably going to sound something like this. Which is not really so pleasant to listen to for a long period of time. Try to record in a quiet place to eliminate as much background noise as possible. But you can also start by recording only the background noise in the room so that you can remove it from the audio track later. 
And for audio levels, I try to peak at around minus 12 to minus 6 decibels. The first thing I do after I finished recording the audio is that I remove the background noise from the track. And then I go through it all and remove the pauses and all the arrows I made. And here I also make sure that the silent parts are really silent. After this is done, I export the audio footage and open up in Camtasia where the next step is to take the audio track and video track and match them together. Most of the time I find myself using the audio track as the master track and I try to sync the video footage to match the audio. And I do this since I can do so much more editing on the video track than the audio track. For example, You would probably notice right from the start if I sped up my voice. Or if the speed of my voice was inconsistent throughout the video. But you would probably have a much harder time to notice if I sped up the video footage or if I completely stopped it for some time. In this step I might also add some basic effects like text on the screen or some highlights to the area. And that was all the steps in my process. Now the video is probably finished and we can release it. The average time I spend on each of these steps are the following. And as you can see the most time consuming part of my end is to capture the video footage. One can say that it takes some time for me to write on the screen. But the reason I show you these numbers is not to let you know that I am really slow. The reason I show you these numbers is to let you know that it's okay to take some time. And that not everyone can create a video in a short period of time. And that's okay. You take all the time you need. And you, unlike me, will probably get faster with time. Lastly, I'm going to leave you with some tips. The first one is about colors. You can use colors to highlight important details and to create a structure in your video. I, for example, always write the theory in blue, while I keep the example questions in yellow, to help the viewer know what we're about to do. There's absolutely nothing wrong with making longer videos, but always try to keep them to the point of a lecture. A viewer can easily sit through a 30 minute to 1 hour lesson, as long as the presenter is doing everything he or she can to make everything about the subject that the viewer is there to watch. And therefore, the presenter also needs to identify and remove all the distracting elements that takes away from the subject at hand. For example, in my lessons, I always speed up my footage, right? And that is because the main point of the lessons is for a viewer to grasp the subject. They are not there to see me write for two hours. I also recommend you to always try to start by giving a quick overview about the content in your lesson, so that the viewer more easily can distinguish if your video is exactly what we are looking for. And my last tip is to add subtitles as they make all your content more accessible to everyone. And one good thing to know is that the subtitles will always be placed down here. So try not to place anything down here or at least nothing of importance since that might later be covered by the subtitles. I hope that this video was able to answer some of your questions about the subject. But if you still got some or have completed new ones, please let me know in the comments and I will get to them. Thanks for watching.